Mark again. I'm back today to talk about the tester bandsaw. I've been doing a few things to it off camera and because it all just wasn't very exciting to watch, but I thought I'd make another quick video and just kind of show you the things that I have done so far, and then I'm going to do one thing today in this video. All right, so the first thing I needed to address were the bearings, the guides, and I haven't ordered those yet, so because of that, I haven't been able to run it and test it out yet. But those are being ordered. They're a pretty standard size. Uh, I think from McMaster, they're about 10 or 11 bucks a piece. But if you get it off the boat on eBay or something, it's about 13 or 14 dollars for 10. So I'm probably going to go that way. I guess if they break, I can always get the good ones. But in the meantime, that's quite a big jump. Um, another thing I've done is I got the rest of the spray paint and the stickers off both sides, so that looks pretty nice, except for the gouges from where they tried to grind it off. I replaced the gear oil and the gearbox. Uh, according to the little bit of literature I got, which is just a sticker on a removable panel here, it said to use, what, 30 weight oil, unless it was really cold, then use some other weight, and so I I got the impression it really didn't make a whole lot of difference, so I just put in an extra cord of 10W30 I had, and I'll hope for the best. But I'm not too worried. But I did let it run without a blade for a little while, might be five or 10 minutes, and it was nice and quiet, and smooth, there was no problems. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, another thing I worked on was this spring here that helps you lift it. And also adjusts the tension coming back down. The holes where that goes in and where that goes in were all all like kind of ovaled out and and just generally screwed up. So I actually drilled them out and put in a bronze bushing at each location. So it's got a nice smooth fit and it's just much smoother than it used to be where it was just, you know, binding, moving, binding, moving. Oh, also that, that rod was bent, so I had to take a bend out of it. It turns out this does take an 81 inch blade. I don't know why someone had wrote to use 80 and a half, but um, everything I found said it takes an 81. And my Craftsman bandsaw, the vertical, uh, wood bandsaw takes 80 inch blades and I happen to have a couple metal blades for that that I've used for aluminum and brass and I put one on here and it seems to fit so in the meantime I'm just going to use 80 inch blades but as you can see this tensioner is pretty much loosened up all the way so it'd be nice to pull the wheel back a little more where it's supposed to be so I don't have trouble interfering with anything. Uh, I did replace this bumper down here. I just found something in my in my bin of bumpers that was just right, so it's a nice quiet bumper now instead of basically metal on metal. The last thing I wanted to talk about was the electronics, so I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer. Okay, so here's the situation with the electronics on this bandsaw. It has a wire going to the motor that plugs straight into the wall, and then a wire comes out of the motor and goes to the switch. And this switch just makes and breaks that contact. And I was thinking it would be really cool to have this set up so that when it gets all the way to the bottom, it automatically turns off. I'd used a bandsaw in the past at a place I worked that way. Thought that was cool. I was like, I bet I could rig something up to make that work. So I was thinking of all kinds of fancy ways to do it with momentary switches and other things. But then I realized that there's this pointless little lever right here, seemingly pointless lever, and a hole the size of a switch right here. So I'm pretty certain, 99.9% .9 certain, that this originally had a toggle switch, and that's what its purpose was. And maybe the switch broke, and they just wired up that switch just to get it fixed and going. So, I dug through my collection of stuff. I found a nice big old heavy duty Made in America switch. I mean, I only need just on off single pole, and this is dual pole, 
single throw, dual throw. More than I need, but it'll work and it's free. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this box. Hopefully it's not too ugly behind it. They didn't cut a hole with a chainsaw or something. And I'm gonna wire up the switch so that when the bandsaw gets to the bottom, it turns right back off. So let's get to it. Well, this part really couldn't be easier. This is the wire I took off of the old switch, obviously. And we got the two wires I need to go across the switch and then a ground wire. Ground wire probably isn't too important since the wire is just going to the motor, which is attached directly to the body. But since I got it here, I might as well put a lug on it that I can just attach to the back of the body of the switch. So these two wires, even though they're black and white, it really doesn't matter. They're just basically the, the broken hot wire. Here's my little switch. It really doesn't matter which side I go to. And these are screw terminals but they've already been soldered to. So rather than find some screws and find that they won't thread in anymore, I'm just gonna solder these. I had to clean off that terminal. It had a little bit of dirt on there and I couldn't get the solder to flow out on it. The switch is so heavy duty and overbuilt and according to that number, it's from 1965. But it's so beefy that I just, I gotta get so much heat from my little dinky soldering iron in here to actually get the solder to flow. Then it didn't help that it was dirty. All right, the only ring terminal I had that was the right size is a yellow, which is for what, like 12 to 10 gauge wire or something. This is only 16, but I'll make it work, it's all I have. All right, so all I'm doing here, just gonna put the ring terminal through there and that should just give it a good enough ground for what I'm doing. Oh, and I gotta make sure I got the orientation right. Typically when you switch the switch up, it connects the bottom terminals, and when it's down, it connects the top. Since we want up to be on, that means we want the wires on the bottom side. Oh, and I know somebody's gonna say something about having the screws exposed on the back. So I'll just stop real quick and put some tape over that so people aren't worried that somebody's gonna stick their hand in the bottom of the bandsaw while it's running. There, I got my Super 88. If that's not safe enough for you, use your own bandsaw.
there. Hopefully that satisfies the safety crowd. Okay, let's install this thing for good. I've got it in the off position, so I just have to make sure when I tighten it, the switch is still down. Okay, so the final step is to just adjust the lever to actually flip off the switch when it gets down. But I also don't want it to push so hard that it breaks. Yes, I could get a proper wrench, but pliers were laying right here. All right. I think that is good. I still need to do some adjustments to the springs because it should drop on its own and it kind of stops here. Well, there you have it. Nice little upgrade for the bandsaw. I will have to put up another video once I get the bearings in. Assuming the blade that's one inch too short will work, next video I'll be able to fire it up and cut some steel. Or watch it uh, catastrophically explode. The last thing I wanted to mention was doing some further research. This is absolutely definitely the same as the Greenlee bandsaw. I forget the number. I'll put it on the bottom of the screen here. But it is definitely the same. I'll take a few pictures of this and I'll put them side by side with a few pictures of a Greenlee one that's currently on eBay for $900 and there's another one for like $1,200 I think, which is crazy since this was a hundred bucks, but uh, that's why I go to auctions. I just thought that was kind of interesting that this company in Wisconsin apparently was making bandsaws for Greenlee, and then when it went into business, they found someone else, and that's probably when their models changed. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.